you know, had them pull out a little shampoo bottle that even follows their specs uh, in Billings, Montana, and start screaming at me getting off on it. And it seems to be certain airports. You go through some, they're really nice. It's yeah. not very oppressive. You go through others, it's worse. Mm -hmm. Let's be specific. What airport did this happen to you in? And have you seen that it's worse in certain airports? Um, well, of course, Chicago, because that's, um, you know, really a central area for flying, international flying. I think the most flights go out of there. But this was in Burbank, um, Bob Hope Burbank Airport uh, in California in Burbank, California. Um, well, I think really, Alex, what I've noticed is just happening, happening incrementally. It's like the Jews, you know, didn't start out at the camp. They start out with the start. Then they can't go out after six. Then they're in the ghetto. And then, you know, it's finally leave your name on the luggage at the platform and we'll get it to you. But it doesn't happen. It's, it's that what you were discussing earlier. It's the in incremental that's happening. And I noticed that they stop using the wands and then they start using the pat down. This is like something that's been kind of recent for me anyway. Well, think about what a big deal this is. Naked body scanners putting their hands on you, mm -hmm. asking you uh, questions, and it only gets worse and worse and worse. And it's training them. It's training the government employees that all of this is acceptable. Yes. And, and it, again, it's all being done by design. Uh, where do you see this is uh, headed? Because we know that well, I think really what the hope is, is to sort of view this experience as nonviolent resistance. And, I, and, and, you know, like Rosa Parks didn't give up her seat. You know, don't, don't give up your seat at the lunch counter. Know your rights. Know that we are, because the mere fact that we were created and that we live on this earth gives us rights. And we are sovereign human beings and know your rights. And you, that's what we teach our children, isn't it? We teach, tell our children, listen, don't let any strangers touch you. You know, this is your body. And you're, you, you need to protect it and you speak out. Does that change when you become an adult? And then all of a sudden you submit yourself? It's okay to teach your children, but not for yourself. You don't have to protect yourself. So you see, that's the thing is that, you know, that we don't understand how powerful we are as human beings. We don't understand that. And that's, if, if everybody went to the airport and said, I don't want you to touch me, and I don't want, I'm not, I'm not going through the scanners, the whole thing would collapse. But it's because we're in agreement with it, because we think we don't have any rights. I was talking to somebody in front of the line, just, be, you know, on my way back to California from San Francisco, and she was making a joke about, like, you know, she knew it was ridiculous, but she was making a joke about the scanners. You know, we'll all have to go through the scanners. I said, I'm not going through the scanners. She said, you know, she looked at me like, you have a choice? I said, you have a choice. You are a sovereign human being. You are the supreme authority over your body. And you can say no. Unless you're a convicted prisoner, and they're treating us like convicted prisoners, mm -hmm. and the low-level people don't even know what they're doing. They're just as ignorant as the general public. But the globalists know exactly what they're doing, and this is a key part of their overall operation. Uh, this is a drill or a boot camp training us that all of America and all of the world is basically a giant re-education camp. That's right. Mm -hmm. So I think it's just a matter of, of practicing nonviolent resistance and knowing, knowing the rights of man. <laughs> it's that simple. Well, I mean, you know, I don't really believe in the classic term karma, but I do believe in you reap what you sow. Mm -hmm. I can't imagine, you know, the bad mojo or whatever you want to call it, of grabbing people's genitals, rubbing mm -hmm. people's breasts, mm -hmm. dominating people, putting them through naked body scanners. And how as Americans, or as British, this is global, or as Europeans, w w will you let them take your three-year-olds? Because now TSA mm -hmm. has said, just like England, they are phasing it in, it will be mandatory, they're just, quote, acclimating the public. I mean, that's TSA's own words. Mm -hmm. So we're now going to put our babies in body scanners that mm -hmm. pound us with radiation. Now they're saying, well, women may have, have people sew in bombs inside their breasts, yeah. so now we may have to have chest x-rays, mm -hmm. which nobody doubts are, are cause cancer. That's right. I mean, mm -hmm. what, what comes next? We've got to do brain surgery before you can fly to make sure there's not no. a bomb inside your head? No, that's right. If you need a colonoscopy, you don't need to go to the doctor. Just go through airport security. You know? <laughs> they don't find the terrorists. They might get a couple of polyps. You know what I mean? It's ridiculous. So that's why we have to practice nonviolent resistance. I mean, there, there, there's... There's a way to beat it, you know. There's a way to at least combat it, you know. At least, you know, here's the thing. The bottom line is, after 
I stood up for myself, and they still, you know, touched my body. I didn't have the same residual toxic effect because I stood up for something I believe in. I didn't just lay down. You fought think, back against the rape. You yeah. didn't. You didn't enjoy it. No. But I didn't. I didn't stay. I didn't submit willfully, and you know, and feel. Exactly. I found that when I argue with the TSA when they get out of control and put them in their place sternly, like I'm talking to my dog when it's been bad, mm -hmm. that I then feel good and they they feel bad. But see, they're getting a good feeling off their evil. It's 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 adding to the whole delusion that the terror threat is real and that mm -hmm. it isn't staged. For those that don't know, uh, it's now been in the Detroit News. It's now been in other publications, in congressional testimony. We even have the video. Actually, we ought to play that. The uh, deputy head of the State Department said we were ordered to let the underwear bomber on the plane and he was protected. And the FBI for two months lied about that and had to admit later they were covering up. Mm -hmm. I mean, that whole thing was staged. In 7-7, it was a drill using government patsies who thought they were taking part in a drill. And uh, again, we're showing video right now off the, ma off the mainstream news where they put their hands under women's breast and go in circles. And I've talked to, uh, uh, again, um, Paul Watson's girlfriend now of many years. And she says it's painful what they do in England. She says they actually squeeze. But but why? But then, what if you said no? I won't do it. What if what if what if hundreds of people said no? Hundreds of people said no. Well, they are saying no, and then thirty civil rights groups have sent letters to TSA and to Homeland Security. Uh, but um, look, it's not just that they're going to squeeze women's breasts and grab men's genitals and body scan your your your, your the naked image of your children, your wife, your husband. Uh, they're going to take your pension funds. They're going to raise your taxes. They're doing it. They're, I mean, this is a criminal group, yeah. and they're using psychology, and they're on. I mean, now we told people a year and a half ago, I'm not bragging, it's sad, that Goldman Sachs premeditatedly engineered this whole thing with the other top six mm -hmm. banks, and uh, globally ten banks, and they know what they've done, and they might get a slap on the wrist now for robbing everyone. Mm -hmm. Well, we are obviously in, in the middle of a major, major shift. And if we look, can look at it in sort of a spiritual sense, that we are at the period of the rotting fruit right now. And the weight of the rotting fruit, it cannot stand on the tree, and it will eventually fall. And this, this is the, the nature and the actual physical energy of secrets and lies. They are finite and corporal like the body. Truth is infinite. But underneath the rotting fruit lies the golden seed. And if we can align ourselves with that seed and just try to just, you know, buckle up, Betty, and just kind of take the ride of this shift right now, I think that we're going to come out uh, in a golden age. I really believe that. And I think that's really the idea of standing in truth, not being afraid of yourself, being a spiritual warrior, not being afraid to speak the truth, and not being afraid of yourself. That's another thing. When we give away our power, we think that we're worthless. But it's not the darkness that we're afraid of. It's the light. It's the power of who we are in our being created in, in divinity. And that's what we need to just pay attention to. And well, stand in alignment with that. Extremely heavy. Absolutely. Uh, veritas. Uh, what you've said is the truth. Christina Ebersol. And uh, who was it? Martin Luther King that you like to quote? Um, uh, that the... Yes, the of the universe is long, but it bends towards justice. So when we stand in truth, we have the support of the universe. And that's what this shift is about. It's a shift in consciousness. And people are waking up and waking up and being able to see, like the matrix, through, through the false paradigm, through the lies. And now it's becoming, it's happening at such rapid speed, and now it's becoming so transparent. The desperate act of those SWAT team coming after me would just show their desperation. It said nothing about me. It showed everything about this. Well, oh, we better go get her, you know, and hold on to this. Yeah, it's not about terrorism. It's about domination. It's about letting you know, hey, uh -huh. we're the boss. Mm -hmm. And guess what? You, it's it's as, as simple as the click of the heels, folks. Click of those little heels. You didn't know that you could get home to who you are that quickly. You know, because we're in Oz right now, and it's a horse of a different color. But you don't forget you got the ruby slippers on. <laughs> and all you do is click.
click them and you return to yourself. And that's the most powerful thing we have. Well, what is the movie Ants? Uh, the uh, the uh, cartoon, yeah. the, the animated. Uh, yeah, that's a great one. And you've got the grasshoppers all sitting around. They're in a grain bin, plenty of food. And one of the uh, the aide de camp to the head evil grasshopper comes over and says, "We got plenty of food here. Why are we dominating and fighting with these ants?" And he goes, "Those little puny ants outnumber us a hundred to one. And if they ever figure that out." It's over for us. Mm -hmm. That's right. And I think we're starting to figure it out. That's why it looks, that's why everything is just so transparent. Everywhere you turn, it's like, oh my God, what a lie. Oh my God, that's such an obvious lie.